So the end of the pool stages approach for England at the Rugby World Cup and it's all pretty serene, isn't it? Given the chaos that was ensuing them coming into the World Cup, the negativity around the squad, they have qualified, they're going to top the group, they're going to go through to the quarterfinal where they're most likely going to face Fiji, but they have named their team to take on Samoa and even though there might not be much riding on the game from an England perspective, there is still some very, very notable bits of team selection. In particular, the return of Owen Farrell and George Ford as the 10-12 access. So drop a comment on that, let me know... Are you a fan of it? Are you not a fan of it? I'd imagine there'll be quite a mixed reaction to that news. And also, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel as well. But let's get into it. It is amazing what winning can do, isn't it? As I mentioned in the intro, England, understandably, by the way, came into this World Cup with a lot of criticism. I was saying that they'd be underdogs, particularly in the Argentina game, but they have slowly built throughout the tournament. They have got the wins that they've needed. And it is quite a luxury, really, for them to get to this final pool stage game and already be qualified and already be top of the group. No one else in the other pools has had that luxury. Yes, Wales are already qualified and they don't need much to get themselves top of the group, but they still do need a point. So for England, I think they come into it in probably as good a place as they could have hoped, particularly when you look back on the start of the tournament. Having said that, even though from a result perspective, they're going to go through and they're going to be top of the pool regardless, I think it's really important they win here. And I think it's really important that they win relatively well just in terms of momentum for this team they have done a great job of going from that place of being a really low ebb to where they are now as I say they've built momentum they've started to win games and that can have a bit of a domino effect so just in terms of this World Cup and in terms of this campaign and in particular a quarter final which even if they play Fiji I think they'll be possibly underdogs for well maybe not of the bookies but I think in a lot of people's minds they need to keep winning. And this team selection actually is a reflection of that because Steve Borthwick has gone pretty strong in his team selection. I'll put it up on screen. As I mentioned, George Ford 10, Owen Farrell at 12 is the big headline and the big talking point. And I'm intrigued to know what the reaction is going to be to this. So England fans, put it in the comments. Are you happy to see the return of it? Are you resigned to the fact that this was always going to be something that we probably saw at some, some stage. Ever since Steve Borthwick became England coach at the start of the year, loads of people have been saying that it's likely he would return to George Ford. Owen Farrell was his captain. So the fact that they're 10-12 probably isn't a huge shock. So are you just resigned to the fact that it was always going to happen? Or are you actually happy about it? And I must admit, I'm kind of in the latter. Because... I look back at England's best performances over the last, I don't know, eight years, and it's been George Ford and Owen Farrell at 10 and 12. Now, maybe you'll say that that partnership had run its course. If you look back to 2020, 2021, that kind of period, England were a bit stale and it was still those guys at 10 and 12. But I think in particular for the game plan that Steve Borthwick is going to implement, which we've all had enough time now to have a look at and understand what it's going to be. England are going to be hard to beat. They're going to be very tactical. I think George Ford at 10 and Owen Farrell at 12 is possibly the best combination to execute that game plan. Certainly having one of them at fly half over, say, Marcus Smith, I think if you're playing that game plan is the best style of play at this moment in time. If England were playing more attacking, then yes, I think there'd be much more of a case to have Marcus Smith at 10. He's obviously on the bench. But for now, I kind of get it. Yes, maybe it's not as inspiring as many of us would have liked, but I do understand it and I don't particularly mind, but you can let me know what you make of it. As for Marcus Smith, he's on the bench. I didn't know if we'd see him at fullback for this game or whether that's going to be something that we just see him coming off the bench um, and playing fullback in, in the latter stages of matches. I wondered whether they would have got all three of them on the pitch once more just to test it out ahead of the quarterfinal. But I think if we look at this team, actually, at this moment in time, that looks pretty close, perhaps, to what we'll see... England play in a quarter final. I don't think there'll be too much movement in there personally. But anyway, there's a few other things to, to get onto. You can let me know your thoughts on it overall. A few other thoughts that I wanted to, to mention really. Jack Willis injured. That was the other news that came out yesterday. The England flanker picked up a knock in the last game towards the end of it and has since been ruled out of the World Cup. So gutted for him, as always the case with players in this situation. You just feel for them missing out on the rest of the tournament, having worked so hard. Remember the, the months of training camp that they had to slog through to then miss out through injury just on the cusp of the knockout stages. Like all the other players from all the other nations, 
it's really disappointing. But I suppose the question now is who should replace him? And who are England going to call up? I haven't seen it yet. I have to double check. But you've got Don Brandt, Tom Pearson, Zach Mercer, Sam Underhill and Tom Willis, who all played some part in the training camp over the summer. So you would imagine it's going to be one of those guys. And what do you reckon? There's no like for like, is there? And Jack Willis, you lose possibly England's best flanker over the ball. Maybe Tom Curry would be in that conversation as well. Do you go for an underhill in terms of the tackling ability? Do you go for a Mercer, his footwork, the different dynamic that he gives you at number eight? But then I'm not sure about Tom Willis and Mercer because I feel number eight at the moment, it looks like Ben Earl has got the starting jersey and it's going to be Vunapola off the bench. So would it be worthwhile calling up another number eight? Which leads me to Tom Pearson. And I know he's a guy who doesn't have much experience, but I just wonder whether he could be a point of difference or an alternative option for England in this World Cup should they need him. Again, comment section is where you can leave your view, but I'm leaning towards Pearson as the player they should they should call up. Elsewhere in the team, the really... Well, the selection I'm pleased with, but equally can't quite get my head around, is Alex Mitchell at nine. And I always thought Alex Mitchell should be in the England team and realistically should have been the starting nine. He wasn't in the original squad. Jack Van Portfleet gets injured. He comes in and then basically since that point, you've got the impression that he has been the starting nine. Now, is it a case that he was just so impressive once he came back into the squad that he had to be nine? Has it been that his performances have been at a level that actually he has played his way into the shirt? Or is there some confused selection decisions there from Steve Borthwick with that original squad? And actually, we could look at Johnny May and say the same thing. Johnny May wasn't part of the squad. He came in when Anthony Watson got injured. And you get the impression that he's now one of the the main starters as well. So I don't quite get how we were at one point, a couple of injuries and got to where we are now. Certainly with Mitchell, I don't have an issue with it because I've always wanted him to be the nine. Johnny May, probably a bit less inspired by that choice. But anyway, let me know what you think on that. It just seems... It, it doesn't quite seem to add up from, from my point of view. The final point in terms of personnel I wanted to mention is actually something that I said a moment ago, Ben Earl at eight. Actually, I think if you look at this England team, I think the forward pack seems quite settled in that I don't think there's too many people that would have a huge amount to say of who else should be starting. I think Dan Cole, maybe at prop, people would say they'd like to see a younger option in there. But Ellis Genge and Jamie George will be the starters in the quarterfinal. Marito, Jay and Ollie Chesham, I think, will be the starters in a quarterfinal. And then I think with the performances of Ben Earl, he's played his way in. Courtney Laws, we know, will be there. And I know Tom Curry's coming back from suspension, so that has been a position that has fluctuated a bit. But in particular with the Jack Willis injury, I think Tom Curry will start for England going forward in the tournament. So the forwards, I think, are very, very settled. The back line, I think, less so. I've mentioned Mitchell that he seems to be the man who holds the number nine jersey. England have changed at 10, though, whether it's Farrell or whether it's George Ford. Because of Farrell coming into the centres, is it going to be Ollie Lawrence and Manu Tuolangi? Is Joe Marchant, who's on the wing here, going to play in the centres? They have different options there. And then the back three, we've seen alternate and change as well, with would Marcus Smith be at fullback? Freddie Stewart comes back in here. Johnny May is on the wing. The back line, to me just seems to have less certainty on what the best combination is. The forward pack seems settled. Is that a fair way to assess it? Let me know. But overall, England have gone strong. They need to. They need to win. They need to keep the momentum going against Samoa, who are no mugs. They've had a disappointing World Cup, I think, the Samoans, really. But what was it? It was under double digits, I think, that they lost to both Japan and Argentina. So England, you would expect to win relatively comfortably, but it's not an easy game. It's not an absolute gimme. So England need to perform. And that's the reason I like that England have gone strong for the game and also strong ahead of that quarterfinal that they'll have in a week's time. I look forward to reading your comments. Make sure you are liked and subscribed to the channel as well. And I'll see you in the next one.